Greetings from Life and Life Ministries. I am Reverend Michelle Young, and I am here to journey with you as the Lord prepares his church for his return. He is returning for a church without spot and wrinkle. And last week, I spoke with you at the 945 session, which is now. Remember, we also have another session on a Wednesday at 1.15 p.m. Now, I want to start off by reading the scripture that I ended with last week. Acts 8, 9 to 20. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God, the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Saints, is this song familiar? Now, some of you will be um, probably thinking, well, um, not, not to do with me. Well, first of all, let me just say that Simon was saved. He believed and he was baptized. So, you know, here's one who saved and was still dabbling in divination. Now, you may say, I don't dabble in divination. So, before I go on, let me just say, if you are disobedient and you are rebellious, Rebellion is as witchcraft. You may as well be casting spells and dabbling in the occult. So I want us, in case we think, here was poor Simon, it's so terrible. We need to understand that these deep and hidden things is a lot of rebellion in us and a lot of rebellion in the church of Jesus Christ. We are casting witchcraft on in the pews by our rebellion. So, so let's just go on here. Let, let's just move on here because there's a way for us not to be rebellious and there's a way that Simon, Simon was saved and he's still in bondage. He was using divination. So Simon needed to receive deliverance from divination. And if you've had any doors open in your life, I just want you to know Divination in your ancestral line, divination in your walk with the Lord before you became saved. We're not speaking of rebellion, though rebellion is as witchcraft. I want you to know, if you've not received deliverance from divination, if those doors have not been shut, if you've not been led through a process of repentance and brokenness and deliverance, most likely divination is still there hijacking your walk with the Lord. As a matter of fact, a lot of things that we've been exposed to, if we've not had deliverance from it, it will be diluting our walk with the Lord. Those are the spots and wrinkles that have not been removed. And it is causing many of us not to walk in power and authority because holiness is what brings power and authority. So I want you to understand, and that's just one example. Remember, Judas hung out with Jesus, and in the end, Satan entered Judas. I want us to understand clearly as children of God that we must not be unaware of the schemes of the devil. We are truth-centered. 
We are truth-centered, but we are not unaware of the schemes of the devil. We need deliverance. There are areas in us where the flesh must be killed. We know this fasting and praying, but we also know that there are bondages there because there are demons in our mind, in our emotions, in our body, in our soul, not our spirit man. And we must cast those demons out. And that comes through repentance and brokenness and deliverance. So I want to just go on a little bit and tell you that sometimes in our dreams there are what the word of god says in matthew 13 25 while men slept his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way our god is down i'm not going to go into too much detail today about uh, when demons come in our dreams but i want you to know your god is down and some of us there's filthy dreams that we have there's dreams of witchcraft things come in our dreams those are things those are ways where the enemy is depositing things in us and we need to be set free of those deposits in the mighty name of jesus the enemy in our life is never ready to release us. His only language is spiritual violence. We have to learn how to pray spiritually violent. The kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force in the mighty name of Jesus. So saints, let me just pause here and see. If you want to learn more about how to walk in repentance, brokenness, deliverance, holiness, call us at 355-5090. 225-6055. You will find us at Life and Life Ministries, 45 Anna Street. We are there on a Sunday at 5 p.m. We are there on a Tuesday at 4 p.m. Prayer meeting, Bible study at 6 p.m. All day, tarrying the presence of the Lord on a Friday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. You will be able to hear our teachings on YouTube at Life in Life Ministries. Now I'm going to pause here and continue. And I want to say to you, if there are sicknesses that the doctors have no diagnosis, they don't even know what has caused it, you need deliverance. If you are repeating sin over and over, sexual perversion, you have addictions to pornography, drugs, you love the Lord, but you can't seem to stop repeating sin. You're memorizing scripture and it's bouncing off. You need deliverance. The word of God says in Hebrews 10, 26 to 27, for if we sin willfully after that, we have received a knowledge of the truth. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. Saints, I want you to understand here that you are receiving the knowledge now. You cannot say not receiving it, the knowledge of truth. If you are sinning over and over, you have to also go deeper and ask the Lord to, to allow you to, to, to go, not, not allow you. Saints, you know what? We have choice. If you are not being taught that you need to repent and you need to receive deliverance, then you need to find out and be taught where you will be discipled in this area. I'm not asking you all to leave your church. I'm asking you to find where you are being taught. If in your church you're not being taught this and you are stagnating, you're born alone, you'll die alone. You have to answer to God. You need help. You need to be set free. You need to be discipled and taught about repentance and brokenness and holiness and deliverance. So I want you to know that the word of God says in Hebrews 6, 4 to 6, in case some of you are saying, well, I'm saved, I can't fall away. The word of God says, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. I want you to know that if you have tasted the good word of God, the whole counsel of God, maybe you have not tasted the whole counsel of God. Because if you are telling me, if you are thinking, you don't see the need for deliverance, then you have not tasted of the whole counsel of God. We all need progressive sanctification. We all need deliverance until the day that we see him face to face. I want you to also know that there are demons in the air on the earth and under the sea. So we have marine spirits in the waters. I'm not going to teach you that right now. That affect us. Marine kingdom is what is referred to. Leviathan is one such. And it's in the Bible and there are others. Do you understand that 
at the end of the day, God calls you to take responsibility for producing fruit. If you are not producing fruit, if you are not obedient, let me tell you right now, if you are a person that is rebellious, you are practicing witchcraft and you are cursing yourself while you are worshiping God on a Sunday. Saints, I want to encourage you. We must start to bear fruit. We must be obedient, fruitful disciples. And I'm encouraging you here. Do not be satisfied with yesterday's, yesterday's oil. Want more. Want more holiness. Want to walk in power and authority. That's your desire. That's my desire for you. So I'm going to speak over you right now. Father... In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, send your fire out over the airwaves. Father, I ask that the break anointing be invoked right now over the people in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and I declare over you right now, I break all spoken curses and negative words that have ever been spoken over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. And I command those demons begin to leave and go to the pit right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I break all spoken curses and negative words that were spoken over your life by yourself and by others in the mighty name of Jesus even those in authority who spoke negative words over you I cancel those words in the mighty name of Jesus I command all ancestral spirits of Freemasonry idolatry witchcraft false religion polygamy lust and perversion come out of your life right now in the mighty name of Jesus and go to the dry places I command all hereditary spirits of lust rejection fear, sickness, infirmity, disease, anger, hatred, confusion, failure, and poverty come out of their lives right now in the mighty name of Jesus and go to the dry places. I break the legal rights of all generational spirits operating behind a curse in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Devil, you have no legal right to operate in the children of God in the mighty name of Jesus. I bind and rebuke all familiar spirits and spirit guides that would try to operate in their lives coming down their generational line all the way back to Adam in the mighty name of Jesus. I renounce on your behalf all false beliefs and philosophies inherited by your ancestors in the mighty name of Jesus. I break all curses on your finances from your ancestral line. There may be ancestors that have cheated or mishandled money and you are finding today that you cannot make ends meet in the mighty name of Jesus. I cancel that curse over you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I break all curses of sickness, disease, and I command all inherited sickness to leave your body right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and declare healing. Father, purge every organ in their body with the fire of God and the blood of Jesus. I renounce on your behalf all pride in your life and all pride inherited from your ancestors in the mighty name of Jesus. I break all oaths, vows, and pacts that were made with the devil by your ancestors in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Every demon that is leaving must go to the pit right now. Come out of the minds of the people, the will of the people, the emotions of the people. All demons on assignment to block them from repenting. I command you to go to the pit. I cancel that assignment. God, take your people through deeper repentance. God, cause them to recognize the need for deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. I break all written curses that would affect your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I break every time-released curse that would activate in your life in cycles as you get older in the mighty name of Jesus. I destroy those cycles in the mighty name of Jesus. I break all generational rebellion that would cause you to resist the Holy Spirit. Wherever there's rebellion in your life, I cancel that curse of rebellion. I I cancel rebellion. Father, I command those spirits of rebellion to leave and go to the dry places in the mighty name of Jesus. I break all curses of death spoken over you right now and spoken over you by people in authority. Father, I cancel all curses spoken in this nation, over this nation of Trinidad and Tobago. I cancel it in the mighty name of Jesus and God's life and our life will bring us to life and restoration. God bless you. We love you. Uh -huh.